Hello friends and welcome to Fey Earth, a magical world set in an alternate 19th century Earth, where every creature from folklore and fairy tale is real, have always been real, and lived alongside humanity. Join our adventurers as they explore a world of arcane mysteries and danger, where the new scientific and industrial age collides with an ancient world of fairy and magic. These are the stories of the Femme Fatales, an adventuring group that has been travelling Ireland for well over a year. They have fought many, many adversaries and defeated many dangerous foes. Most recently, one of the party, Bronwyn Pritchard, a frost giant blooded gunslinger, was named the Champion of Tara by the High Queen of Ireland, Her Majesty Grani O'Connor. Having been granted this title, she fought Prince Tordelvok Flan, Prince of the Ulster Elves of the North, and potential heir to the throne. In a decisive battle, she defeated him, thereby preventing his tribe from annexing certain lands in the north of the country. As a reward for this, she was granted the title Lady Bronwyn Pritchard by the High Queen, and gifted an estate, Ard Bracken House in County Mead. She is returning today after having spent two weeks visiting with her parents in the sleepy fishing village in Wales, where she was raised. Her and her friends will be travelling to her new home that you will be seeing for the very first time. But before we join our adventures, let us first hear from the players. Hi, I'm Susie Cantrell. I'm going to be playing Bronwyn Pritchard. She's the party's gunslinger. Bronn is a fey touched with frost giant lineage. She was originally found as a baby wrapped in a blanket with giant runes sewn into it in a sleeping fish fishing village in Wales by humans. She then left that village later on to learn about her fey past and became an adventurer. She's about two metres tall with white hair and icy, icy blue eyes and a slightly blue tinge to the skin. So everybody always thinks that she's cold. She's probably described as the sensible member of the party and tries to stop them from rushing into things and getting themselves killed. Hello there. My name is Christina Donahue and I play Selena. She is a fate touched of Banshee heritage and comes from a family of fate touched wanderers. Her fey blood gave her some striking features like her long raven black hair, black fingernails and perfect alabaster skin. Her eyes are a bright silver that make her pupils look almost white. Through her blood, she has access to death magic, but also the magic of life, which makes her the party's healer. She learned her magic from her grandmother and her mother, both of whom she very much adored. But by now, she has actually sur surpassed both of them, though Selena would not admit to that. With her 19 years of age, she is the youngest member of the party and very much the baby. Hello, I'm Kandai and I'm playing Yafua, a Zimbabwean fate touched mermaid sorcerer. Yafua is very much an adventurer at heart, but also a staunch academic. They are 5'8, deep brown skin, fit but curvy, afro hair with hints of a deep blue and green in bright direct sunlight. They also have deep brown eyes with golden and green flecks like the eyes of a crocodile. They have crocodile scale markings down the side of their face and on their back that are pretty camouflaged and blend into their natural skin tone unless they are exposed to water. And then they turn a more greeny, bluey color. They also have a lot of piercings and love what they do. Hi, my name is Neva Rook and I play Olaf Skag. Olaf is a young dwarf who hails from the snow-covered dwarven caverns of Jotunheim in the north of the world. He's a rogue who didn't pay all that much attention in school in favour of having adventures and travelling throughout the continent, honing his skills in stealth and sleight of hand. Olaf is a proud dwarf with a deep respect for his culture but not quite enough to have stayed put in Jotunheim and followed the traditional dwarven career path of becoming an engineer or a miner or a blacksmith. 
he's somewhat unpredictable with a bit of a chaotic streak, but his new Irish friends have beaten some sense into him in recent years. Olaf is short but broad, with jet black eyes and dark skin. His prized possessions are his two enchanted dwarven axes that were forged in the dwarven mines under the mountains of Jotunheim. They're made from fey iron and are inlaid with silver. He's very rarely, if ever, without them. Due to a few near-death experiences on recent adventures, Olaf has awakened some of the latent earth magic abilities inherent in his people. And so he's exploring this new aspect of his heritage as he continues his adventures in Ireland. Now that we have met our players, let us meet the world of Faerth. You do arrive in a little after 12 and uh, you're disembarking from the boat and you can see your friends there at the dockside waiting for you, Selena, Nafua and Olaf. Okay, uh, Bronwyn is obviously going to get off the boat. She's going to give... Um, she's going to hug Selena first. Then she's going to um, hug Olaf. And then she's going to kind of look at... Take him by the you know hands on either side of his arms. She's going to like look him up and down in a kind of... No, you don't look like you're stone so so that's okay and then she's gonna like kind of hug Nafua but she doesn't know Nafua that long so it's a bit more of a do we hug I don't know like <laughs> we also got completely shit faced like a while ago and I feel like but uh and then she's gonna turn to Selena and she's gonna say look I'm really glad that you checked in um, when you did or well I'm, I'm glad that you checked in to tell me that Olaf was okay because you said you would you were just a couple of hours later than I was expecting and you appeared in a market my mother thought you were a ghost and you know considering I'm the only fey touch that most that any of these people know it was pretty intense <laughs> For a lot of them. Um, Gladys, actually, this is a lovely woman who sells apples. She She's very old. She had a heart attack when she saw you. Um, it, it, was, it was really bad. But it's okay because when I went over to her, I... I don't know. I, I was I was I felt really helpless, and I was thinking. Tirgiv said that you should be able to do magic as a fey touch, and I, I remember thinking, well, you know, I wish I could heal like Selena, and somehow, like she had stopped breathing, but somehow, like she started again, and I don't know if that was because of me, but maybe I can do magic now. I I don't know. Is that is that a thing? She's looking at Nifua and Selena and it's kind of like, I don't know what happened. I don't know if it was me. <laughs> that would definitely be something worth investigating. I hope you don't mind us. Well, I hope you don't mind getting examined when we get back to the house. That's definitely a sorcerer thing. If it was Finn, Finn would be absolutely... Selena, you can back me up on this. She, she, she'd want to be all scientific about it oh yeah she, she, she'll experiment on you I just look <laughs> over at everybody and I say it probably was just not her time to go yet so but I could also be Bronwyn like I developed strange abilities after the stress of nearly dying what felt like a million times in the fairy mound so maybe this came about after your your fight that's what I'm thinking, but I don't know, like, I mean, I don't think it's a frost giant thing because, oh, well, how would I know if it's a frost giant thing? Oh, I'm just really tired. I'm glad to be home, though. Um, Are they known for healing powers? No, they're known for being really strong and from what I can tell, they, they, they can freeze stuff, so... 
you know, they, they, they have control over ice, um, I think. But that's I mean, very strange, then. So, I, I don't know, but yeah. maybe I can do magic now. I wouldn't be surprised if the stress of your jewel maybe brought some innate playabilities to the surface. Absolutely. That was Probably. Exactly. Uh, do you know what? It would have been really great if I could have sank into the floor the way Agnacon did when he was taking his brother away. My parents are still trying to set me up with that guy, Yanto. I don't know if I told you about him. It was so awkward. So, you're a bit out of his league now that you're no, a lady. If, 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 you, if, you imagine, if you imagine the scene... Just to clarify, I assume that you're having this conversation in a cab on the way back to the yeah, house. Yeah, yes. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, I'm getting ready to tell them about... My, my father even didn't go out in the boat that morning because he wanted to be there when I woke up. I, I told him he you know, to go anyway, but he wanted to be there for breakfast. And so we're sitting down and I'm gearing up to tell them, you know, a little bit more about how, you know, about what was really going on with the professor. And, you know, so there's a knock at the door. My father goes up to answer it, which is again, really strange. So I continue talking, not thinking anything of this. So I'm telling my mother about the professor and her weapon and how it was really bad and we ended up fighting her and it was actually really dangerous and we nearly died. And, you know, I mean, I was going through it quite quickly and I had just gotten to the point where we were going to Tara, you know, we, we'd gotten to Tara and we were meeting with the elves. At which point, my father brings Yanto in, who has some flowers, while I'm telling him about, oh, this is when we met the Elven Kings. I, I don't know who wanted to die more. Yanto looked like he wanted to run. So, of course, I had to keep telling them the whole story up until the duel and... But, you know, telling them that it was fine, it wasn't a death. And, you know, I'm sure Yanta was going to tell me about how he was saving up to buy his own boat and he could be a great provider while I'm telling my parents that I now have an estate and an official title and I'm now a lady. And it was just the most... I actually think I'd rather fight Tordelbach again than go through that. <laughs> it was... <laughs> Throughout the story, Selena is literally on the floor of the cab, like, rolling, laughing. No, you don't like, understand I, how I just awkward. think this is absolutely hilarious, <laughs> and I'm just like, ha, 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 ha. this is brilliant. Yeah. I mean, having to tell them, having to tell them about how I nearly died, and the fact that I didn't contact them first, was already horrible. Because the whole, you remember, it was like, oh, you might have to fight him. You might have to fight him. You might have to fight him. Oh, you're fighting him tomorrow. Come on, let's go to Tara. And then suddenly I was on the hill. I feel like I didn't get a chance to tell them. And when I finally get to tell them, there's some... He's, he's very nice. Don't get me wrong. He's very nice, but... But he's not for you. Really not for me at all. I... I... Oh, I, th I actually thought he was all... I always thought he was a bit afraid of me. And I uh, just... It was... Yeah. I'd rather fight Torlovok again, I think. So, than... at this stage, the cab is pulled back into your house. Um, it's not... Uh, by cab, it's not that far away. It's about... It's a little after... It's, or it's maybe about 20 to... 20 to 1-ish. Mm. And when you get in, your housekeeper has got a, a lunch spread ready for you all. Because she's I'm, amazing. I'm starving. You are actually quite hungry. Because while the sailing was quite good, it's not like a luxury cruise ship or something. We're talking 19th century vessels here. And um, it wasn't like you were going for crazy fine dining or anything like that. You had a light bit to eat early on in the morning. But you're pretty hungry. Okay? Um... 
And you can see she has two extra places set. Um, because she had been told that um, your friend um, Erin, or Lady Roach, or as you would know her, Erin Downing is going to be there. All right? And um, she's um, the, the table is set, but the food's not out yet. It's ready oh, yeah. for the spread. Um, she, and she sees you, she says, it's very nice to see you home, Lady Pritchard. Please just call me Bronwyn. I'm still trying to get used to. Yes, Miss Pritchard. <sighs> in there... fairness she has never called you Bronwyn it's yeah, always been Miss Pritchard yeah I know I feel... but now it's Lady Pritchard so um, oh, you are literally uh, look over at Olaf and, and start her singing let me lady <laughs> Uh, you're in the middle of your third curtsy and Olaf his second formal dwarven bow when there is a knock at the door. Oh, thank God. <laughs> and a moment later you hear the excited voice of your dear beloved friend Erin as she comes rushing in to see you all. Just, oh, there you are, Lady Pritchard. I only jest, Bronwyn, you know that. And... And coming in behind her is her husband, oh, Ignacon, in his true form. He isn't oh, wearing okay. an, he doesn't have an illusion to mask him. He is in his true elven form. The housekeeper had seen him once before in his oh, elven you... form. Yeah, once before. It was quite the shock. And he and he and he has his aura of power Tongue muted, it's, um, so it doesn't affect anybody. Um, um, but when he walks in and gives a very formal bow. <laughs> Lady Pritchard, and as he's kind of as he's straightening up, he's got he's got that cheeky soft grin on his face that he always has, and um, and uh, your housekeeper says um, lunch will be served momentarily, and gestures to the table for you all to sit down. In that, sit down now, and I'll serve you your food that I've been slaving over. And he's all sit down. Yeah. Okay, so she serves you all a, a, a very nice lunch. Um, um, and Aaron is just blah 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 blah. She's like, so I've I've established. Uh, I I did all the interviews for you. Um, I know Selena was was liaising for you with the everything. So you have a household manager, you have a housekeeper, you have a cook, and you have two maids, and you have a groundskeeper. They all came with excellent letters of recommendation. So I was sure that these were good good people. I mean, I you know, like running White Rock myself, I know what it takes to run a household. So you needn't worry. Um, I did not have a chance to um. Get the for um, uh, explicit details on the wider estates and the rental incomes. I know that there's a number of farms that you would have a rental income from, but that will all be in good standing. Um, um, Amon Omurda, he's your household manager. He will, of course, look after the finances for you. That's part of his job. The manager? Well, the household manager. Yes, like, you know, um, like Kinsler back in White Rock. Oh, okay. Bron is just sort of she's sort of staring down at her plate, going, "Okay, this is a lot." <laughs> like, you know, look, oh, you know, they used to, they used to be called the Lord's Man, you know that person. But yes, we now call them household managers. So he will be obviously in charge of the overall running of the household. The housekeeper, Miss Nivranok, she's in charge of the domestic staff. That is, she's in charge of the day-to-day -day running of, this, of, the, of, the, of the domestic side of the house. She would be in charge of the two maids. Obviously, um, 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 Quivine Burkett, that's the cook, they run the kitchen. Um, um, but they, so um, they would not be answering to um, Miss Nibrecha, uh, um, Brenock, uh, Aaron, but Aaron, yes? If, if, if do, do, I, 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 how, how, how many people are living in this house that they need so many people to run it um well so far i'm assuming it's well you obviously but i was i are you i assume you're are you you're are you i mean i know finn is set in dublin she's in the university so she's going to be staying here yeah. but i kind of assume that you would all be well, moving there bron is looking around going please so you're gonna move with me but but um, even but yeah, even so but, no this is a this is a very large house it just seems it's a, like for just us, it seems like a lot. To be perfectly honest with you, you probably need at least 
two if not three more maids than you currently have in your employ for such a large house but because you've just moved in i felt it best to get the the bare minimum stuff many of the rooms will be unoccupied oh yes of i mean course. i assume you're not going to use the two wings um wings yes the two way it's it's a it's a it's a it was formerly owned by a bishop it's quite grand. I did get the privilege of seeing it. It's it's quite lovely, and the grounds are quite lovely. Um, and um, um, Megan Cleary, the uh, gardener, she's um, you'll like her. I'm not going to say anything. It's a bit of a surprise. This is a lovely uh, lunch, by the way. She says, turning to the house, she was just thank you, my lady, and she says, I, I couldn't get someone as good as her. But the housekeeper, Miss Me Vratnock, is still quite excellent. Oh, okay. Well, I don't think you'd be able to find anyone better. Yes. Than... Um, yes. So, um, yes. I mean, it's a, it's a, the distance away, like from it's, it's just, a, just a little under fifty kilometers away. So it'll be a few hours in the carriage. Um, oh. That's another thing. There are obviously stables. Um, I did not look at hiring any groomsmen, any stable boys, or anything like that. Well, we horses well obviously so you'll be getting horses for your carriage our own car well, well how are you going to get around unless you're going to get selena to teleport you everywhere i suppose be... you could do that most people don't have a all-powerful mystic healer who can teleport tens if not hundreds of kilometers when they feel like it but you know um you will probably at some point be lo there is obviously a stables on the grounds you will probably at some stage be looking to get a number of horses for your own personal riding and then also for the carriage as well maybe in which case you will need to employ some more um and then it's at that moment that i Khan puts his hand on it on, on aaron's hand he says and he says he's like my beloved you're overwhelming her Bronwyn is a very strong and capable woman. From a fishing village in Wales. Thank you. I grew up in a cottage. <laughs> we didn't have a maid. We certainly didn't have wings. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but let's just finish our lunch and then we shall all travel in the carriage and we will see how we, how we do. Bron is basically shooting a kind of look of I could kiss you right now, but I totally won't. But yes. thank you. Yes. So uh, now, yeah. So it's going to take you. Uh, it's probably going to take you about four and a half, nearly uh, hours to get there. Okay. Um, because you are going by carriage. Cool. Okay. okay. Um. She does explain to you that the nearest major town is Navin, and there is a railway line that should be getting up to there probably in the next six to nine months, mm -hmm. and that will make things a lot easier to travel to Dublin. Um, it'll be a lot quicker. Um, you would then just need your 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 carriage to get you from Ardbracken to Navin. Then your men could return back to the house while you get on the train. And then sure you could get a cab when you get into Dublin. It won't be a problem. Okay. So, you all head in the direction. Or sorry, you head into the carriage. Now, her carriage is quite fancy, okay? Um, with all of you in there, it's a bit cosy. All right? Um, it is a, So, just, you know, um, you've got Aaron and Ignacon, And then Olaf beside Ignacon, And then Selena, Bron, and um, Nafua on the other side, you know? Um, oh, I just remembered something. Sorry, mm -hmm. Bron is going to ask, has there been anything in the paper about the professor? No. Just because she'd been... They, they, their, they, their paper had reported that she was recovering from her injuries when, you know, no. she was actually dead. No. Okay. Um, and, uh, and, and she turns and says, I haven't brought it up on it being a tar with Her Majesty, but to be perfectly honest with you, since that report there's been nothing else i think the official stance from the government is to just not bring her up and hope people forget about her okay because they don't need that kind of trouble 
No, definitely not. Yes. Um, the uh, Jotunheim entourage is due to arrive in Cork in two days' time. Oh, okay. Uh, do you know anything about them? All I know is that they will be travelling via the Faerome and they'll be entering... Uh, yeah, the Faerome. Well, yes, it's quicker and easier for them than so that... getting a boat all the way across the North Sea and then coming around to Cork. They'll be travelling via the Faerome and um, entering Ireland through the portal of the Munster Elves. So that means... Which means they're actually... I think, they're, I think their port is actually in Limerick, I think. But anyway, they'll be arriving in... That in... means... Sorry to cut across you. That means they're all either... True Fey, or have magical items to allow them to pass through the Fey realm, or well, to be honest, from what little I know of of Jotunheim, and I don't know much of it. I mean, Mass Olaf here could tell you better than I, but it's the um, it's the Northern Sami peoples are the only humans, and then Fey Touch that live in Jotunheim. Isn't that correct, Olaf? I mean, I'm sure there are other humans, of course, Norwegians and Swedes and the likes, but it's well, mostly... There are, there are true fae as well. But it's mostly the, the fae, the frost giants, the trolls, the dwarves, and other species of fae. So, it's the... the, the these. I, I mean, I don't know, but would you say that the, the Sami would be interested in establishing trade links with an industrial nation? Or would it be more likely to be the giants and the dwarves? Olaf. The Sami people tend to keep themselves and practice their traditional ways, at least in my experience. So I would expect it to be a delegation of dwarves and cross giants. Hmm. So there you go. Oh. Well, I hope. Like I don't. Now I don't mean to sound bad, but I hope there's no trolls. Yeah. You were in Jotunheim, weren't you, Bronwyn? I was. Did you ever meet a troll when you were there? I did. He threw me at a wall. <laughs> that would probably kill most people. Uh, yeah, it hurt a lot. Um, the <sighs> reason I'm alive is because I stayed down and I didn't get up. I didn't really want to get up. It hurt a lot. <laughs> so, yes. Um, I don't know who's going to be in the delegation, but I suppose my next... it'll probably be dwarves. Maybe it'll be some of your relatives, Olaf. Oh, that would be, that would be nice. And are you a secretly a, a noble or? <laughs> no, absolutely not. No, no, no. But I, I am very curious about who will be attending. Mm. Um, There's... It's like for me to send a letter home to find out, probably. Oh. But um, yeah, I'm most curious to know. We wouldn't. I mean, if I'm, if I'm, um, you know. The, 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 the champion and, and so on. Bron is saying this with a kind of, you know, kind of grimace on her face because she's just like, I just volunteered to do something so my friends wouldn't die. I mean, I wouldn't be expected to meet them or anything like that. Well, obviously. not for trade negotiations, no, but, but there will be a banquet in Tara in, in about, not this Saturday, but I believe the following Saturday. There's the official royal banquet before the delegation leaves. So, as the champion of Tara, you would be expected to attend. Well, I never caught an invite, so maybe they didn't uh, remember to. So that's. Or maybe the invite is waiting for you at your new home. Braun is just going to be very quiet. <laughs> and she's going to kind of sink into the seat, and she's just kind of. I need no. I need to know who, who's who's there um, because I don't. Well, the entourage arrives on Wednesday. I could try and find out for you, but Her Majesty herself isn't really. It's a, it was a business group out of Cork City that sent a formal invitation. Do you? Oh, do you think it was Akami's father? You know, a, you know, business people in Cork. You spent some time there, didn't you? Well, I. I only know Duffet Jones. We, well, we, per, perhaps you, you remember Akane, of course. Of course, yes. Yeah, her her father. Was oh a well, then maybe he might be involved in these negotiations, and maybe he could help you. 
you know, it, it's fine. I'm just gonna... Uh, Bran is just gonna say, okay, I just want to make sure that none of my birth family is there because it's gonna be awkward because uh, only, well, I don't know if they know about me. I don't know if they want to know about me. I don't want to cause trouble. Why would there be trouble? Um, what do you mean your birth family? So I wasn't... I was raised by humans. Yes. But as you can see, I'm not... You have frost human. giant blood in you, yes. Yes. So my parents were not frost giants. The people who raised me, that is. So, um, I, I just, my grandfather is apparently horrible, you know, he hates non fey Oh, your grandfather is a frost giant? Yeah, my, my mother is a frost giant. Oh, that's why you're so strong and powerful. And then Ida Khan does at that point says, I always thought that your blood, I always thought there was a certain... Like, it's a complex thing when our kind have a child with it, with, with a mortal. You thought there was a certain what? Well, it's a complex thing. Um, <laughs> I'm just like, what? No, what? it's... Okay. It's... 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 it's Mortal blood, human blood has a very <laughs> strong diluting factor on our fey blood. In that, if you're... If one of your parents is 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 a, is a is true fae, and then your your other parent is human, you or don't touched. you don't ne or fae touch yes, which is basically a human with just a bit of fae blood in them okay. anyway. Okay. Um, you don't you're not like more fae than other fae touch. If that makes sense, you'll be you might see you might have a a slightly stronger aura to you, but and that I always thought. I just thought you were always a very strong and formidable warrior. I am not at all surprised to discover that your fey ancestry is literally your parental generation. As you know yourself, and Selena will of course vouch for this, um, I cannot speak for Nafua, but many fey touch, the, the fey ancestor could be five, ten, twenty generations back. You won't, you often don't know. It's often from what I understand, a story of our great, 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 however many times grandfather fell in love with a beautiful elven princess. You know the stories. But, mm. you know, I'm not surprised to hear that your mother herself is Faye. Uh, sorry, just, I need to, I told Aaron about, you, I can't remember if I told Aaron. You never did, no. No. You oh, never told Aaron. Okay. Because you went, you wouldn't have had an opportunity to sit oh, down and have that oh. conversation with her. Okay. Um, she knew you'd gone to Jotunheim because you wanted to look into your fate past, but mm. you never got a chance to actually sit down and talk to her and tell her what you learned when you were there. Okay, Bron is going to look at the the rest of the party. I'm just going. She's going to say, like the rest of the party, you told. I know. I think you understand why I'm so nervous about this, right? Absolutely. Um, it seems like your people have very different customs around those who are... Famous. My mother gave me up so my grandfather wouldn't, you know... Kill you. Kill us, <laughs> basically. Um, so I was under the impression that that was how the Fae felt about, you know, mixing with humans or... Not being married and mixing with humans and that sort of thing. So, Olaf, this is the first time you've ever heard Bronwyn phrase it like that. In the past, whenever she's talked about it like this, she's always said, I thought this was a frost giant thing. She's never said, I thought this was a fey thing. Well, she did think it was a fey thing until we were in Tara. And then she discovered that Brandov, who, you know... The Leinster elf. Leinster elf has, like, a million <laughs> children that he, like, checks in on and cares about and future generations and stuff. So she was really surprised yes. to discover that. And from there, she kind of figured, oh, it must just be, 
you know, my birth family are shit ass. <laughs> yeah, but just like so, as because uh, Olaf being true Fey himself is like, this is I think possibly one of the first times you've said phrased it that way of. Yeah. I thought this was how the Fey, plural and not yeah. specifically frost giants to humans. Not all Fey, Bronwyn. <laughs> <laughs> I just don't want to end up... I mean, if my mother's there, I, I've I've never met her, so... Well, I don't... Okay, no, that, that would be fine. I, I, would, I would handle that somehow, but... If my grandfather's there, I don't know... It does sound awful. I mean, I do feel sorry for your poor mother that she has such a horrid father. Um, well, I never yes. met her. I met my uncle, who described him as being a very difficult man, which I took as upper class speak for horrible piece of shit um probably yeah <laughs> that well not necessarily even an upper class thing i think that could also be i mean Agnacon, you have referred to your father as a difficult man as well and he says yes i have and he turns to you and says it's not so much an upper class thing as much as it is at times a father son thing mm. okay No, I don't. I just know that he's a noble. Yeah, all you know is that he was a, a pretty powerful noble. I do know that my uncle ran, uh, or runs, I'm sure he still does, he runs um, a trading, like, you know, he was supervising uh, frost giants that were freezing fish for, for trade, and oh, okay. so he, um, you know... That that's that's how I know frost giants can have ice powers. But uh, I mean, I don't know. I'm I'm probably just being paranoid. You know, it, it's just. I don't believe well, that you, you ever. What you need to take your mind off it. I think you should write to Alpheus for a new dress for the reception in Tyra next Saturday. Well, I don't know. I've already if... seen you in your old dresses, and I think. Lady Bronwyn Pritchard should, should turn up in a, in a new Alpheus. Once you mention the name Alpheus, Erin immediately purchases, oh, myself and Her Majesty, we had a fitting with him at Tara. He is wonderful. He is. Oh, he is so wonderful. We can't wait for the yes, dresses. Yes. They're going to be absolutely amazing. The genius of it. Like, he's a genius dressmaker, but also an artificer. Yes. To add enchantments to fashion. Yes. We would be the envy of every woman from here all the way to Prague. Oh, the last time we met with Alfie's, remember he brought over that wonderful, it was it was a sweet drink. Um, well, that wasn't the last time the rest of the party met Alfie's. Nafua did meet him oh, while you were yeah. away. Well, Bron doesn't know that. But Bron, of course, <laughs> doesn't know about the last time a party member met Alfie's. <laughs> Okay, do you know? Oh, Icnacon, actually, you might know, being a, a man of good taste, is there anywhere a dwarf could, could find a good tailor in this country? Oh, um, I will ask around. Um, there's a few places in Dublin that have good gentlemen's gentlemen. There's a um, place there's, where I got my tux. Yes, um, I'm, I'm sure we can, we can certainly find you someone, um, to get you some some nice formal wear, of course. Um, yes. Great. Thank you. Yeah, you, you. on any names, and, and I'll be sure to, to visit them and mm. It's a, this is it's a shame, as you know, my my clan were exiled, so our our domain is like the the fairy mounds that you recently visited it's not truly part of the fairy realm itself otherwise i would offer to let you use the a port our portal to enter the fairy realm and travel at speed to jotunheim you could i'm sure find an excellent dwarven tailor back home and then be back in a matter of days but alas you know what, I, Khan, I was so recently in the fairy realm that honestly i am very very happy to take a vacation from it okay so um we were like this this carriage journey takes as i say it takes a 
about four and a half, nearly five hours. Um, they're not going at a breakneck speed. They're going at a pretty pretty good speed. It's 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 a it's a carriage in four, so they're able to push them that bit further. Um, you do pa- come out of Dublin. You come into Meath, beautiful, beautiful part of the country, um, farmland everywhere, really, really good land, and you do eventually find your yourself passing through a tiny little village. You come past Navin, you kind of skirt the edges of it, continuing down the road until you come past this tiny little village. There's about maybe seven or eight buildings in it. And then a little bit further on, coming up into a a road that branches off the main road. And then you see yourself coming up to the walls of a grand estate. Huge. A pair of um, the the iron gates are open and entering in you find yourself coming into a massive set of grounds the grounds look like they've been let run a bit they're not completely overgrown but they certainly haven't been well tended in the last while but you can see evidence of recent work in some of the areas there is some fabulous trees large um, majestic trees um, you can see there's a slight, what looks to be a slight stream trickling off to one side. Um, off to the west, you can see there's what looks like a wood land that it looks like it comes into the estate. So the walls clearly don't go all the way around, or if they do, they cut through the woodland, but the woodland comes into the estate. And you come around a bend and you find yourself looking at this breathtaking view of this wondrous palladian house it is huge there's a cent the main central house is three stories tall um does anyone else have the downton abbey theme song in their head <laughs> yeah <laughs> That's all I'm singing. this would probably be this i think i mean i'm not that familiar with the show but while this, the the main central building would be slightly smaller than the house in Downton Abbey, there are two two story wings that attach at curves. So it's like it's basically it's like you've got three structures: this massive three story structure, and then two smaller two story structures. And the two story structures are offset slightly in front of and at an angle to the main house. And then there's these curved wings. That come out and like it's unbelievable. And um, standing at the front of the house, you see. Um, sorry, apologies. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six. Yes, there are six people standing at the front of the house. Um, there is a man in his early 50s. He's perfectly turned out wearing a dark green kind of blazer style jacket with a gold trim. Um, um, He's he's about 185 centimeters, six foot one, short, thinning, curly blonde hair. It's almost white. And as I said, he's um, he's uh, looks to be in his early 50s. Um, Beside him, there's another woman. They're both also human, early 50s as well average build okay so about i don't know maybe about 170 273 about five foot six and she is perfectly turned out um similar kind of dark green jacket which you're you're, you're realizing this must be the official uniform of, of our bracken house um long uh, uh heavy wool skirt uniform. she's got she, she has her like her hair is a white like proper white in this perfect perfect bun Okay, and she has this very, very serious look on her face. I'm looking at Ignacon. Is he still? Um, he ha- Ignacon has changed into his human form. Okay. He has um, um, adopted the illusionary human form to mask his elven form. Okay. Beside them, you see a shorter woman. She's much more stocky build, strong arms, a bit of a good. Um, very very dark skin similar in color to Olaf's she's not dwarven but she is clearly fey touched and with Jotunheim dwarven ancestry uh, she is wearing not the 
um, dark green and gold of the rest. She's wearing a grey woolen cardigan and um, auburn hair that's kind of like parted to the side. And she's got this a- apron, kind of half apron kind of over that. She's clearly the cook. And she has a little, a little white hat on as well. Then there's two young girls, both human, in maid uniforms. One, she's quite tall, about 180, about 5 foot 11, really slender, curly brown hair. It's mostly up in the bum with a few curls past and very pale skin. And then the other one, who's um, a bit more average height, um, um, well, slightly taller side of average, okay? Um, but kind of lanky, angular features. She's very, very pretty with kind of a tan skin and, 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 and lovely wavy blonde hair. Though. And then the last one, um, and this one, she really stands out. Um, she's wearing kind of simple work clothes. Oh, she must be the gardener. Um, must be the gardener, yeah. So she's wearing like um, trousers. She's got a dark green kind of jacket, but unlike the indoor blazer, this is more of an outdoor type jacket. Pale skin, husky blue eyes, long white hair. She's once 197, about six foot five. Really strong, really strong build. But kind of standing there, kind of self-conscious and awkward. And we have some sleep wolves in the back. A fey-touched woman with frost giant heritage. Oh my god. Oh my god, I have so many questions. Oh my god, okay. Um, as the carriage <laughs> comes forward and stops, the man in his 50s steps forward, opens the door, and extends a hand. And Aaron is... You're expecting Aaron, of course, to get out first. Yeah, obviously. And she's looking at you. Oh, oh okay. Uh, Bron is going to get up, try not to hit her head on the door. She's going to take the hat because, you know, that's the dumb thing, I guess. Um... And as you come down, he says in a very clear voice, Welcome home, Lady Pritchard. My name is Eamon or Murda. I am your household manager. Would you like me to introduce you to the rest of the staff? Oh. Thank you for joining us in this episode one of the Adventures of the Femme Fatales in our unique setting of Fey Earth. We hope you had fun and you'll join us again as the party learns more about their new home of Ardbracken House and its secrets.